Now that I've gotten pretty much everything sanded that I want to get sanded, everything, all the old finish is completely off of it everywhere. Now I'm going to try and make a repair to this. I've never done anything like this before, so I'm actually kind of nervous. Actually, I'm, I'm terrified. So what I'm thinking about doing was I took a razor blade and I scribed this straight line right here. And I'm going to take my utility knife and just keep cutting until I get through this, this jagged piece right here. And then I have another piece that pretty, pretty closely matches um, the other piece. This has a little, I, I'm not sure what this is. It could be maple. I, I, it kind of feels like maple. I don't know. I just don't know. Hell, I don't even know what this is. So what I'm thinking about doing is cutting this off clean and then taking a block of this, putting it up there and transferring this mark underneath it and matching this and just trying to, this is rounded over. It's, it's got a, a bead, like this big bead and try and match that and glue and tack this down and then fill whatever gap or crack there is with some wood putty. Being that this is gonna get dark stain, I'm hoping that this will hide and blend in well. Nice. This old wood so dry, it's just kind of, kind of splitting off right along the score line that I just made. So nice. I can already tell that I'm probably gonna have a V-shaped joint right there, most likely. And that's okay, cause that'll give me enough space to put some filler in but it may not I don't know I don't know what I'm doing at this point that is why it's the channel is called fake it or make it making sure that it's pushed down as flat as it can be and make a good mark to cut by. And this is what we need out. Remove, remove this shape and I believe I'll just take that over to the bandsaw. Now that I got this cut out on the bandsaw, it worked out pretty good. Got a little burning going on, but that's okay. We got the piece. And I'll put it up here. And we got a pretty good fit. And we are gonna have a little bit of a crack up there, but like I said, I think that's gonna be okay. Everything is nice and tight. I left the line whenever I cut this out so that I could have something to shape to. And in all actuality, it's not gonna hurt to be a little bit longer than this to kind of hide what is behind this finished piece here. So now I gotta figure out how to shape this. And if you measure, that's about a quarter inch thick this piece is about a quarter inch thick so I have a, a lot of material to remove but I want to try and get this contour I want to try and match this contour somehow so let me think about this for a minute true to my fashion I decided to take this one step at a time I knew that I had too much material to work with. So I went over there and just roughly cut my repair piece 
out a little more than it's not perfect I just cut it out a little more than quarter of an inch roughly I'm gonna have to sand it down anyway but I just needed to be able to see what I'm doing this isn't gonna be a very a very strong radius I just need to try and and cup this backside just a little bit so it'll sit just a little bit flatter it don't have to be perfect I don't believe because as long as I have enough contact surface between the two pieces to get uh, a good amount of glue on there and hold and maybe put a tiny pin nail in there I believe it'll be okay hopefully so now I gotta figure out how I'm going to shape the back side of this I don't think it would be a good idea to show you how I done this I'll just tell you because it was kind of hairy I went to my what is that six by 36 belt sander and you know how there is you know you got the top roller in the whole belt sander standing in the up, upright position i just took it and it kind of matched the radius of this and i just set it on there and let let it grind down i don't know if you can see there's a slight slight cove in there and I just kind of went back and forth. I can only do half of it at a time. I'd go across the top of it, flip it over, go across the top of it. That's a kind of a dangerous deal. It got my finger one time. It's not the best way to do it, but it's the only way that I could see to do it with what I have available. So now, see how that fits. And I'm going to try and rock it. It actually, it doesn't teeter-totter back and forth it actually has a nice full contact fit so that's not too bad and also had I had just remembered from learning about working on gun stocks and I rubbed the piece, I squeezed it and made full contact with it and just kind of did like that. And then I looked in the light and seen the shiny burnished areas. You could take a pencil or something, put some graphite on there and do it and it'll give you the spots that are making contact and then you remove the spots that are making contact off this piece. But I could clearly see the shiny burnished areas and then I further refined that those areas with some 150 and got an even better fit on the back side of this. So now I'm just gonna take some glue and get a good coating of glue all over this. sure it's all over and then also want to put some on this long grain area even though it most likely won't contact that great still not going to hurt anything oh you gotta love wood glue okay now I got, I have some 5 8 pin nails in my, loaded up in my gun. And that right there is on there. And I'm also just for the sake of making a good form fit, push down on that with these clamps. You don't have to get crazy. Just something to just something to kind of make that glue bond. I've let this glue sit for a little over an hour. It's nice and secure with the three pin nails in it 
excuse me. And if you look at this other little chip out right here, I took the same piece of wood, did the same exact thing, except because I did not want to cut into this piece, I had to use some thick CA glue with some uh, activator, some accelerator, and glued it in place, and it's really stout and secure. I will have to be careful with shaping this because you know, although CA glue, super glue is really strong, um, I'm using Star Bond, so I know it's good quality material, but the vibrations and rough handling can break your glue joint, so I'm gonna have to be really delicate with this. But I think that turned out pretty good. I have more material than I need to work with, and so I'm just taking my handy little scrap sanding block, and I'm just gonna start blocking it out and trying to get the, the overall shape that I need. And then I'll come back and try and blend it in a little further with some less aggressive sandpaper. This is 150 of it. Here's what I came up with. The color is pretty drastically lighter than the native wood that's on the chest. For about the 50th time in this project, I'm going to attempt something that I've never done before and I'm not even sure if I'm doing it right, but I've cut out this rough representation of this shape here and off camera I cut these really thin veneer strips of walnut. I'm going to try and bend and stretch the wood fibers on this walnut veneer strip and let it kind of cure in that bent formation and then just cap this over it and wood glue it in place and I have one for each side. What I'll do fix this in the clamps in this this ratchet clamp here bar clamp whatever you want to call it put that there slide that in place Tighten it up, make sure that it's nice and square and flat. Just put some water right here. that I gain, I hold it down. <sighs> Would you look at that? Hmm. That is probably wrong as rain, but that's, uh, that's how I'm doing it. All right, y'all, I got a little carried away. Um, I, I formed 
the bend in each veneer and then one at a time I applied, I used, uh, what is that, DAP contact cement and I applied it to the lid itself and to the veneer and I used the contact cement because it bonds really fast and really it, it sets really hard whenever it find, whenever you make contact with it and it is it is permanent so I decided to go with the contact cement and after I applied it to both pieces the lid and the veneer waited about 15 minutes it's really hot in the shop so it was plenty of time it was kind of tacky to the touch but it didn't come off on my fingers I applied it and then I just went around it with masking tape and locked it really good down in place and came back over it with a rubber mallet and just kind of shocked it all over and just kind of kind of lightly tapped it and made sure that it got any air bubbles out I tried to burnish it out with my fingers best I could but the hammer will really lock it down so this tape probably wasn't necessary but I only get one shot at this so uh, I believe I got it and, and it's going to work out all I have to do is kind of blend it in and trim the edges off the outsides and this long tail off the bottom here and I think that's going to actually turn out pretty good so I'm, I'm excited making some good headway all right after we get this stuff blended in, we'll be into putting some new finish on this and seeing if we can make it look pretty again. 